Unfortunately, the symptoms I described in the previous episode seemed familiar to me. I experienced them once when I was finishing my trip to Norway, which you can follow by clicking on the link above, and I set from Svinoviště to Warsaw after the defender stayed overnight on board the ferry. I suspected the gearbox sense of electrical connector. To check it, I needed a piece of dry ground so that I could crawl under the car and start checking from there. As it was still raining, it was hard to find a dry piece of ground. Even at the gas station, though a puddle was all over, it was covered. However, I noticed the room where the car wash was located and thought that no one would use it in such weather, so I decided to hide there. The floor in the car wash wasn't too dry either, but luckily there was no standing water on it. And there was no risk of rain on my feet sticking out from under the car. And the room was sheltered from the wind, so it definitely seemed a better choice than fumbling around outside. As you can see, the place was perfect. Enough space on each side so I could start working. First, I decided to dry the connector with compressed air. I suspected it got wet after several hours of driving in torrents of rainwater on the road. Then, I was supposed to use a cleaner for electrical connectors and this should solve the problem, as it happened during the winter trip, when most likely the seawater mist caused the connector veins to cover in patina. I carry the air hose for the onboard air system in the service window, where I have easy and quick access to it. So removing it took several dozen seconds. The connector for the compressed air tank is also at hand, so connecting it takes another few dozen seconds. The most complicated was the operation involving doing it all with one hand, because I had a camera in the other. After turning the compressors on, all that remained was to spread the mat on the damp floor crawl under the car and recall where the connector was. The first shot I missed. On the side of the gearbox there is a connector that is part of the gearbox harness, but it seems to be plugged in the loop. I have no idea what it is for, so if you have such knowledge, let me know in the comments. The connector I was looking for is located in a much less friendly place because it is between the transfer box assembly and the transmission handbrake. It is connected to the speedo sensor. There should be a pulsed output on the red black wire with the ignition on and the rear prop shot rotating. The pulse frequency is proportional to speed. If the signal is missing, the speedometer stops working. If the speedo stops working, engine power is reduced. So I treated it with the compressed air as I intended, but unfortunately I couldn't find my contact cleaner. I always carried it in the box on the roof, but this time it wasn't there. So I used the impregnate for tense locks. I carried it in case they were leaking. I thought that maybe it would block some moisture entering the connector. Then I plugged it in and out several times to clean eventual patina from connector spins and continued my journey. I had plans to stay at Lake Livno, also known as Lake Bushko. It is located near the Croatian border and is the largest water reservoir in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The road from Cetina took me 5 hours and 30 minutes, during which I covered 135 kilometers, making a little detour, stopping on the way in Livno. Getting close to the water was very comfortable. Only such an obstacle in form of a dry branch blocked our way, but it seemed something that I should be able to deal with it rather easily. Despite the very hard line next coating that I have on my Defender, I didn't want to scratch windows and I was afraid of damaging the snorkel top, so I decided to deal with this branch by hand, instead of driving on and pushing it with the car. The task was a bit difficult because I had a problem with lifting my right hand and felt pain in several planes of movement. But as I'm right-handed, it was hard for me to use my left hand for this task. Let me just tell you that a month and a half later, I had shoulder surgery, because it turned out that I had the supratinatus muscle completely torn. So it was a miracle that I was able to do such things with this hand. The last few hundred meters passed without any problems, and after a moment of driving around along the shore, 
we choose a spot for the night. We finally got to the place we love so much. In silence, away from buildings and noises of tourist spots. As it was still quite early evening, I tried to work on the transducer connector again because my operations had no lasting effect. The improvement was temporary and the symptoms returned. I went to Livno hoping to buy a spray in some mall, but it was Saturday evening and all the shops were closed. I decided to look for a contact cleaner at the gas station the next day and in the meantime just enjoy the moment. Kira liked it too. While I was preparing dinner, she went exploring, which obviously gave her a lot of joy, as you can see. Activities involving digging in the ground in search of hidden creatures or simply to make a lair were among her favorite actions. And so our lazy evening. Past. It wasn't the warmest one. The feeling of coldness was intensified by the blowing wind, but fortunately, I positioned the car so that it was a natural protection against it. Somewhere on the horizon there was a gap in the clouds giving us hope that the rainy weather would finally be left behind. But the clouds billowing in the sky looked ominous, and it was hard to say whether it would not end with some rain. Fortunately, it didn't end like that, and the rays of the setting sun reflected in the surface of the lake were what we had been looking for for a long time. From a biodiversity point of view, in the broadest sense of the word, Bosnia and Herzegovina is one of the most unique regions in Europe. Lake Busco is a perfect example of this. Together with the Sava wetlands, it is the most important wintering, migration and breeding site for water birds and raptors in the country, and a key site of the Central European flyaway. It is the largest karst depression in the Dinaric karst and perhaps the largest periodically flooded karst field in the world. The site comprises seasonally flooded agricultural land and a lot of forest, seasonal marshes and pools, permanent streams, karst springs and sinkholes, and the largest peatland in the Balkans. Lowlands forest and thickets developed in the coast parts of the lake and its tributaries. In such an environment and finally in the rays of the warming sun, Kira decided to fuzz over the ball again. But the breakfast tasted great to me, and I thought it could be one of our little wards to come back to again. Finally, we unhurriedly packed up around noon and set off the pre-planned route along the ridge of the Tusnica mountain. I like this kind of approach to expeditions, picking a route on the map that seemed possible to drive and then checking it on site. So it was this time. In the attached graphics you can see the planned route marked in red. The blue triangles are the actual tracks. As you can see, I did not manage to drive as planned. The serpentines we climbed up the slope looked as used, so we didn't expect any surprises on top. The views were fantastic. Here I had the opportunity to stretch her legs again and get a little more exercise. And I worked hard on quite tight turns until we reached a vast pasture. The hilly area of Tushnica, apart from the main ridge, i.e. the Tushnica mountain, also includes the northern ridge of the Jalovas mountain, which is 1540 meters high. Both stretch in an east-west direction, separated by the Vocipoli mountain valley. The 
mountain itself is not large, but due to its isolated location, it stands out in space and dominates the landscape with its height. Below, on the southwestern edge, you can see Lake Bushko, where we spend the night, lying at an altitude of 760 meters. Continuing along the pasture to the east, quite unexpectedly, we met a couple of tourists from Slovakia. Greetings, Boris! It also turned out that unfortunately we would not be able to drive up the highest peak of Mount Dusnica, Vitrenik, 1697 meters, because there was a walking path leading to it from the side. At first we kept to the same road we were going towards the peak. Farther, however, we moved more in azimuth heading south towards the M6.1 road because I did not want to go back exactly the same route and the area seemed to be okay and relatively safe for driving. It was obvious that someone had once driven something here so we believed that we would also be able to use this shortcut. Of course there was no way we could move quickly. You had to watch out for the stones lying on the side of the road because many of them seemed small but in fact some of them turned out to be the size of the defender's wheel. The last thing I wanted was to replace the wheel here if I inadvertently puncture a tire. The edges of these marled rocks were really sharp. At some point we came across a cross set on the hill. Right next to it there was a bench facing the lake, from which there was a beautiful view of the area. There was also a place where pilgrims could replenish their water supplies, which we also did. It was a perfect place to take a short break and take a look at the area from the drone's perspective to see which way to go farther towards the lake, because the trail at times was no longer visible among the bushes growing on the hillside. The last few hundred meters was something like a road, but you could see that no one had driven this way for a long time. I definitely do not recommend following my route to all those who care about the paint of their car because the bushes growing on both sides of the trail quick mercilessly rubbing against the side of the car pushing through them. At some point it seemed to me that farther driving probably made no sense because I had only a wall of greenery in front of me. But farther driving at a snail pace and another turn which with the defender cannot be taken at once turned out to be a good choice because in front of our eyes Suddenly, red roof tiles of buildings several dollar meters away appeared, which was a big surprise for us. As it turned out, which is perfectly visible in this footage, also our appearance from this side was a big surprise for the local residents, who looked at us with considerable surprise, probably wondering where the hell we came from. After reaching solid surface again, it was time to switch from low to high, 
and we continued our journey towards Lake Britain. We continued on following the planned route. From Tomislavgrad, which we reached by asphalt road, you can of course get to the lake by a normal road either, but that's not what we're looking for on our trips. So again, the red lines on the map mark the direction and we tried to meander to go in the direction they indicated. Driving in such areas is a great pleasure. We crossed the Lyubusa mountain range, which is the south extent to Mount Vran, in the east and north is to Radusha, and in the west and northwest it borders on Duvainsky Poly. The range is made of limestone with developed karst forms. The vast majority of it is bare without extensive afforestation, not even juniper or spruce. Most of the area we traveled was vast pastures. As the rather unexpected detour took us a little longer than planned, there was no time to cook a garment dinner and I decided to take advantage of the luxury of freeze-dried food. This is a really great option when you need a quick and caloric meal and you don't have time for long cooking. For Kira, every few minutes spent on the soft grass instead of in the shaking car was premium and she would have liked to stay longer, but I wanted to reach the lake before dark, so I cut the stop to the bare minimum. A few minutes to boil the water, pour into the powder, wait another few minutes, and the hot meal is ready. Sometimes when intermediate points used to determine the route are placed too far apart, the red line deviates a bit from the correct direction of travel and you can make a mistake on the crossroads. So it was this time. I turned the wrong way and thought that I would return to the track by taking the forest trail. However, the more I delved into the forest, the more it looked like a harvesting site. So the trail was made by machines for transporting wood and it was not leading anywhere. So, I had to turn back again. You can't see it in this video, but it was pretty steep up here. There were a lot of branches on the ground, protruding stones, the road was wet and slippery, and the visibility around was very limited. I really missed a spotter that could warn me of the possible dangers lurking in the ground, and that's exactly what happened. As I was baking up, I suddenly felt something stuck in place. I knew I must have hit something, so I decided to drive forward and correct the trajectory, but the car was just slipping in place and did not want to move forward. few forward-backward attempts and I finally freed myself from the obstacle, which turned out to be a stone stuck under the diff. This is the one on the left. Fortunately, 
Unfortunately, we had no more adventures when we got back on the tarmac. We fought it in the forest at exactly 6 p.m. and just after 7 p.m. we were already reaching the lake. Still on off-road pressure, which can be heard on the tires' noise on the asphalt, but I simply did not feel like stopping and pumping tires up again. Finally, it's time for evening activities. Lake Bushko had a very swampy shore, so I didn't take shower the day before. This lake also had a muddy bottom, but as you can see, it was very shallow. But this time, I decided to stretch out the hose and use the shower. It's hard to imagine a bathroom with a better view and with running and hot water than this one. And that's what Kira was all about. Friendly to all creatures.